Hello everybody and welcome to another Photography Locked Down Creative Challenge. These challenges are designed to stretch your creativity by thinking about what it is you're going to shoot, by learning how to pre-visualize and then make that into a reality within the camera. If you'd like to join in with these challenges and come and meet the incredibly supported group of photographers we've got doing these challenges, please click the little link popping out above me right now up here. Come and see what it's all about. This new challenge, the theme is, it's all black and white to me. <laughs> you guessed it, it's a black and white challenge. And when you're shooting black and white, you kind of really have to shift your mindset because some things work in black and white and some don't. We're gonna look at a couple in a moment. Now, whether you're shooting black and white or color, obviously you have to get things right in your camera. You need to make sure you've got your settings right. You need to think about all the other things as well, not just the, the black and white aspect, you need to think about your exposure, your focal length, your composition, how you're using light, because when shooting in black and white, you remove the color distractions. Suddenly the qualities of light become very, very important indeed. And if you're struggling with any of those things, please come and have a look at my Ultimate Beginners course. It's called Ultimate simply because it's everything you need to know about light, composition, and how to control your camera. It's all there in one place. We've got five star reviews on Google and Trustpilot and many photographers who consider themselves experienced have said they have learnt a great deal from it. So please come and check it out if anything we talk about you find confusing. Let's look at a few black and white pictures, some things that work, some things that don't, and have a go through some possibilities, some ways in which you could interpret this theme. And first of all, you're going to say, but that's a colour image. Exactly. Now it's a nice image, but it works an awful lot better in black and white. Yes, I know there's a slight difference in crop there, but mm -hmm, picky picky. When you look at the colour one, it's OK, but somehow the colour information in, in this shot just kind of distracts from what's actually going on. The qualities of light in the sky, it works so much better as a black and white image and it's a landscape you know this could be of course any genre of photography it's about finding a way to make it work we've got a nice journey through the shot we've got a strong sky we've got some angles and shapes these are all things which work incredibly well when you're shooting in black and white now let's have a look at another example i really like this shot we're in this sort of slightly misty bit of woodland um, and our model Natasha here is sort of dancing and twirling and, and leaping towards the camera. But the sort of mistiness of the forest is kind of lost a bit, I think, because the colour information is interfering with it. But when we drop that into black and white, suddenly it becomes a lot stronger. I think Natasha stands out more strongly. I think the misty atmosphere of the forest is much, much stronger in black and white. Something else that works well is strong sunshine, strong shadows and strong textures, such as this shot. This is actually the loading ramp onto a ferry. Uh, it was crossing over to a little island in Greece and was stood there looking at everything, enjoying the sunshine. And there's birds, there's gulls flying round and round the ferry and was watching their shadows go across the loading ramp, which was of course upright like this in front of the ship. So it was a question of finding the right focal length, getting the exposure right, making sure it's fast enough not to blur any movement of that shadow, and then just waiting, holding that shot and waiting for a decisive moment when a shadow moved across that texture. And just, you know, getting the composition holding it so it's in the right place. I don't think it'd be as interesting, was it smack in the middle? Now look at the background. You see the lines, the vertical lines, where the checker plate, it's not checker plate, whatever it's called, the treads of that steel meet. You see they're pretty much upright. Get your composition, make sure everything's lined up. Wait for the thing to happen. But the reason it works is because it's black and white. With the color information, it kind of gets a little bit lost. Something else that works well with black and white are really strong shapes, a bit like the last shot. You know, the, these buildings, they're very angular, they're very strong. Um, the light and the shade, it's just brought to life with the black and white. This could be anything you like. 
you do need to have your black and white head on in order to find things that work in black and white, as you've just seen. Different textures work very, very well. So this is just the corner of a wooden bench on a beach and the sand below it. Now in this case, when I shot this, I used a shallow depth of field. I used a wide aperture to do that. Why? Because I wanted to concentrate more on the textures of the wood than the sand. And it's that juxtaposition of that sort of smooth texture of the sand against the grainy texture of the wood. And again, the light and the shade. Look, the top of the wood is, is brighter. And then around the edge, we've got this sort of shadow going on. These are the sorts of things that work. Also, of course, as with any shot, whether it's in colour or not, you do have to think about your composition, the angle at which you're going to shoot, where you tilt and twist the camera, how you move your body in order to compose those elements. Because careful composition is always important regardless of colour or monochrome. The, uh, another shot here which, which just works, you need a strong image, a strong composition, being very careful with it. Look at these lines which are leading us to the graffiti and then there's, you've got the reflection in the river. And it just works well in black and white because it is so strong. But if you had these lines at the top, badly composed and a little bit wonky, then it wouldn't. Then it would just be uncomfortable. It would just be kind of, nah. You need to be careful. Remember, when composing any shot, look all the way around the viewfinder. Plus, of course, get your exposure right. Get things right in the camera. Again, we've got textures and we've got some really interesting gentle light, this time in this window. This was actually taken in Burma, now called Myanmar, uh, on Inlay Lake, at a place where they weave lotus fabrics. Now, I'd seen the textures of this wood and, and the way the sun had faded it in different ways. Um, if you notice to the right, we've got a piece of wood which hasn't been faded by the sun and look it's a doorway whereas on the left uh, sorry a window and on the left we've actually got the window on the other side open these are what I mean about composition at a wait with the shot composed until this lady turned around to look at me but it just works very very well in black and white without the color distractions I wish I had the colour version easily to hand to show you because her skin tone, almost everything is the same colour. It's almost monochromatic. It's a very rich, reddy brown. But when you take away that colour information, suddenly you're seeing the play of light, the qualities of light. And there's some very beautiful light on this lady's face. And again, the lines, the textures from the wood are juxtaposing against her and that beautiful light. Again, a strong composition, being careful how you align things. So these are three beach huts down where I run my little one day beginners workshop. Many of you have probably seen these huts because we often pause here. This is just one way you can shoot it. But again, by being lined up so you get the lines and the angles, it works. Even though this was a dull day, if you look at those clouds, you can see the light is very, very flat. There is no strong contrast, but because the subject is pretty strong, again, it works well in black and white. Dramatic scri scries, I don't know what a scry is. Dramatic skies work incredibly well in black and white too. I mean, you know, we've got little bits of light just hitting on the top of these mountains and hills, but it's this big sky. It just works so well and I find it mesmerizing when you don't have that colour information. These are all things, if you're in a landscape, there's nothing wrong with a black and white landscape. Again, it's another big sky shot. This one's pretty grainy because I just took it on my phone. Making the subject small and the sky big. Again, I find black and white, that contrasty black and white thing, these sorts of subjects all work very, very well. Of course, I like a bit of street photography, something a little bit different, something a little bit quirky. Um, and again, by using black and white for this sort of thing, it adds a strength, a power to it. Now the composition is of course helping because it's telling us precisely where we want to look and we're pre-programmed to notice human forms, even when they've got their head cut off. It doesn't matter. What does matter is capturing the right moment and recognizing 
the, all these beautiful shades of grey from the darkness of this guy's trousers um, and the textures going on on either side and the steps, they just work so very well in black and white. Again, street photography um, taken fairly recently, as you may guess. Um, beautiful light. But if you're into that sort of thing, you're into street photography, I find it works very, very well to remove that colour information. It gives it a much more humanistic thing because you get to concentrate on the expression, on the mood, on the light. This girl pushing her hair back in the breeze so she can look at her phone. Um, I purposely composed it a little bit edgy with her on the left leaving the frame and I know they say you shouldn't do it. I say ask to that. You compose it however you want it to look. And I wanted this to be a little bit edgy, simply because this is a current picture. It was taken a few weeks ago. Um, we are in an uncomfortable situation and an uncomfortable image with the mask, the social distancing, the COVID. But look, again, we've got a beautiful sky going on and it just works. It's plays of light. Even though we don't have a face here, we really know what's going on. and We know exactly where to look because we're noticing the light on this woman, on her beautiful coat and the hat. You know, we can kind of get lost into this story. She's holding a phone in her hand and looking at the board in a railway station, thinking about where's she going, what's she doing? And black and white works so well. When you have colour information in this, it just, it just doesn't. And again, this helps us concentrate on mood and feeling. So we've got the two couples. Both couples are looking at their phones. And I just thought it was so quirky and interesting. And again, just by having it in black and white, we concentrate on the people, not the colour. The colour can be a distraction, and it's quite a tricky thing to get yourself into this mindset. How was the shot taken? Well, it's a longer focal length with a wide aperture so that we can separate. We know which couple to look at first. We want the couple on the left, then the right. We're going left to right. If both were sharp, if we had a much stronger depth of field you'd be bouncing back and forth and you wouldn't know where to look and that's really really important so those are some ideas uh, for ways you can interpret this theme it's all black and white to me the hashtag is on screen it's been there throughout please use that hashtag when you upload your images into the album within the group uh, so that we know that it is an entry for the challenge in 10 days time I will of course be going live, we'll be doing a live feedback session, I'll be choosing some images which I think the photographer needs a little bit of help and a bit of encouragement and in, uh, feedback, plus of course some which I just love and then we've got what I consider to be our winners of the challenge. These are not about winning, these are about participating, it's exercise. I'm your photography coach. If I was loose with you, if, 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 if you were trying to win what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that you don't go to the gym to see who can win on the running machine. You go to run to exercise your heart and your lungs and your legs and your body. That is the point of going, not just to run faster than the person next to you. And that's what these challenges are about. Photography Lockdown is supported by small, regular monthly uh, donations made by members who feel they get a benefit from it. If you can afford to do that, please make a little donation. Come hang out for a while if you haven't been to PLD and uh, if you think it's of value we'd really appreciate a small donation to help keep it going. So enjoy this challenge. As I said if there was anything you didn't understand photographically about the camera end take a look at that Ultimate Beginners course. It will clear the fog for you. Be well. I look forward to seeing you in the live judging. Take care.